we have an opportunity to talk to one of the world's leading stem cell researchers. She has pioneered new understandings of skin diseases and hair loss and a variety of others because of her pioneering work. We've invited her here to talk to you about not only science, but her personal journey, her personal career, and certainly what it's like to be a woman in the world of sciences. It is so important for students to realize that we scientists are passionate about the science that we do, but we started out as they did. Uh, there are several things that keep me doing what I'm doing. And the first and foremost is passion. Uh, I think we all have passion about uh, what it is that we choose to do in life. And it took me a while to find my passion. Uh, but once I found it, then I knew I was in the right field. I knew what I wanted to do. And there was going to be nothing stopping me. We um, are still many, many years later, passionate about the science that we do. And I think conveying that to high school students is one of the best ways that we can to, uh, to really propagate uh, the interests that they have in science and in research and in choosing a career for science. The interest that I have, that interest really developed uh, starting out much as you probably have done, and that is that uh, you notice life outside of you, uh, outside of your household, you're, you're noticing animals, you notice plants, you begin to wonder about where all of this comes from and how it comes uh, about. And, uh, and so it really started uh, for me with a butterfly net in, in the fields outside of Chicago. This experience was Definitely one to be remembered. It definitely inspired me to pursue my career in science. And I encourage others, if they're able to, to attend this seminar because she definitely is an inspiration to the science world. And I think whether you're in Afghanistan, whether you're in Central Park in New York City, uh, that there are ways in which you can study science, get interested in science. And once you've got that passion, uh, for, uh, for what it is that you want to do. Uh, just don't let anything get in your way. Just keep moving, keep trying. I think the World Science Festival has uh, really been inspirational for high school students interested in science in New York City. I think it has reached out to really worldwide to high school students from many different countries. We as scientists are in the laboratory day in day out and we're encountering barriers all the time uh, the flashiness is that you make a discovery and that discovery is extremely extremely gratifying you're discovering something that nobody else has ever discovered but the way along the road to discovery is a long road and you're going to come up with excitement but you're also going to come up with failures. And we're all facing barriers in our life, uh, some smaller than others, some large. Uh, but I think those barriers are, very, uh, are a very important part of developing the drive, the motivation to succeed. I think just going in there, and if, I, if in any case I end up facing any discrimination, I'll definitely remember her and believe that anything's possible and just step up there. So the question then is, uh, is how does my gender affect my, uh, my uh, support for embryonic stem cell research? I feel that uh, ultimately it's a decision that, uh, that really, for me, is really um, a gender blind decision. The study can really lead to new and improved uh, therapies and uh, and diagnostics and understanding of, uh, of different types of human diseases. This is an amazing experience. I'm already pursuing my career as a nurse future and this has helped me understand what science is really about instead of staying in school, like just learning from textbooks and you know there's more out there than it is in school. But it was an ama amazing experience and I would like to go to these more often. It's really a medically driven uh, support 
for this kind of research. My own feeling working on adult stem cells and something that I probably will always work on is that if I look at where embryonic stem cell research has developed over the last uh, five years or so, um, those researchers working on embryonic stem cells began to say, well, could we actually create embryonic-like stem cells working, starting with adult skin? The only way researchers would be able to do that is by looking at the advances that have been made. Many scientists are not supportive of uh, a study of human embryos, uh, but I think many scientists are supportive of the research that will ultimately uh, take them to new and improved cures for human disease. And I really think this was, I feel really blessed for coming here and I think it's a really, it's like another step to go into genetics when I go to college. You talked a little bit about government recognition and clearly for you the pinnacle must be with President Obama presented you with mm. the Science Award. Tell us a little bit about what it was like to be with President Obama. Well it's really, uh, anytime you have the opportunity in your lifetime, to shake hands with the president, I strongly recommend that all of you <laughs> don't turn that opportunity down. It is, uh, it's obviously uh, thrilling, it's obviously, uh, it was a real honor and, and a treat for me. Um, one of the things that I think was, was very exciting was uh, that the ceremony took place in uh, the room where Thomas uh, Jefferson was shown the map of the West by Lewis and Clark. And so there was history and, uh, of, of science that really uh, uh, set the framework for the setting. And perhaps even more than shaking the president's hand was to listen to the president of the United States uh, stand up and give a 10 minute talk about the importance of science. The importance of science at the educational level where all of you are in science classes, the support that's necessary for, uh, for providing you with the microscopes and computers and various different uh, experimental needs to be able to really learn and get excited about science. My name is David Meek. I'm the AP Biology teacher at Marble Hill School for International Studies. And I'm so happy to bring 12 of my best students here today to see that science is just not something from a textbook. Science isn't just something we read in journal articles, but it's something that we come and get to interact with the researchers, hear what they're doing, see what they're doing, and maybe be inspired to, go, to find our own career path in the future. As we were just talking, Parker, about the importance of really being able to um, provide government support for that basic science uh, that really leads to biomedical research. The importance of us as a country continuing to be leaders in biomedical research across the world, uh, to continue in a way that, uh, that really is funneling our, our efforts, our intelligence, our abilities into really trying to help people and improve the situation around the world. And I think uh, science can be a great ambassador. Uh, we don't have a political agenda. We just have a passion and a conviction that, uh, of, of what it is to be a scientist. I really enjoyed uh, conversing with the high school students. They're persistent. They're excited about science. and. Uh, whatever motivation I can provide to fuel that fire that they have for uh, pursuing a career in science, I think is, is really wonderful. And it's wonderful that the World Science uh, Festival really uh, brings that together, really brings them uh, to New York City to, uh, to participate.